So I'm sitting here with uh, Babar. Babar is with Brak. Could you please sit here? Uh, with Brak, which is uh, based in Bangladesh, but also uh, in other countries. So maybe Babar, you could uh, introduce yourself and say a little bit. Okay. Uh, my name is Babar Kabir. I'm working with Brak. Uh, basically, I work in Bangladesh, but yeah. Brag does operate in, in East and West Africa, South Asia, in Afghanistan, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, and we're also working in Haiti. Uh, uh, we, ha we differ from many NGOs. Uh, we're just not a microcredit, uh, mm -hmm. but we are a more holistic, integrated, uh, equity-based NGO, uh, where we try to reduce uh, poverty through inclusion. Uh, water sanitation, hygiene, uh, the program that I'm running at this moment, yeah. uh, we are targeting a behavior change for about 40 million people. We have already uh, ensured that about 21 million people have, have, have had access to sanitation, mm -hmm. uh, new sanitation as per MDG definition. That's so quite a lot. That's, that's, a, that's a pretty that's large amount. Yeah. It's a huge amount. Uh, water, we had promised our funder, mm -hmm. uh, the Ministry of development cooperation of the Netherlands government mm -hmm. that uh, we would give about uh, uh, connections to about a million people I think we just reached 0.7 million not still, too bad still uh, some work to do but some work to do but sanitation is a major mm -hmm. uh, crisis area and yeah. it, it continues water for Bangladesh is critical is because of the arsenic contamination yeah. and uh, somehow it's dying out I mean there, there's a lot people are losing interest in arsenic yeah. uh, so uh, one of the appeals to the uh, the cube would be is uh, uh, let's keep up the interest in arsenic uh, because yeah. uh, it's very serious and people are dying. Yeah. Uh, so sanitation is one priority, uh, and arsenic affected areas, water supplies mm -hmm. to those are the second. Okay, maybe you can explain a little bit on, on the success on uh, your goals on sanitation. How how did that work? Uh, just uh, we like describing ourselves as CLTS plus plus. So we are not. Starting from the bottom of the mm -hmm. ladder, we come in, in the middle of the ladder, mm -hmm. number one. Uh, number two is uh, we do give fully subsidized latrines to the ultra poor, those who are beneath a dollar a day. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, uh, whatever motivation you do under the CLTS program, you will not be able to, uh, they will not be able to access those mm -hmm. latrines, let's put it very bluntly. Yeah. So you have to give them a fully subsidized latrine which has privacy, which has security, and uh, which meets the MDG definition on the hygiene conditions. Uh, we teach them about uh, hand washing. Uh, it's a very intensive. We work at the village level, mm -hmm. uh, unlike others who do it in uh, <coughs> at uh, sub-district levels or something. We go down to the household level. So we have household cluster meetings. Yeah. Uh, so that's a very important part is uh, we talk individually to people, convince them mm -hmm. of the need for change. Okay, well, we had the founder of CLTS <laughs> here before. Right. You can check his video out later. But he was a little bit uh, disillusioned with the theoretical talk at this conference and the amount of action that is needed to be done in the field. Uh, maybe, I mean, what, what, what's your view on that? I mean, if you just have a message now on, on the feeling you have in this week, in this conference, and what needs to be done, but, I mean, what would that be? What that, I mean, do you understand what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I, I'm not disappointed. It, it depends on your expectation. Yeah. Uh, if you come with an expectation that you're going to achieve uh, a certain bar uh, and you don't achieve it, then you get disillusioned. Uh, I come here is to learn uh, because uh, the, there are more than 80, 90, 100 countries here. Mm -hmm. So everybody's got an experience to share. Yeah. Uh, so at, for me, it's picking up certain elements from each of the approaches. Uh, it's the barriers. So it's a networking. And then, uh, unlike somebody who likes sticking into a thematic area, I keep jumping. Yeah. That means uh, I go to uh, a s to listen to a certain paper, then I jump to another paper, mm -hmm. then I jump to another paper. Uh, all of which then I can synthesize and uh, refine my approach. We are doing well. I mean, that's what I understand is, I mean, there's very few NGOs who've reached 20 million targets right, in five years. Exactly. So we've done that. So, but maybe we can do it slightly better next time around. Because there's still 2.6 billion minus 20 million. If the figures are correct. 
half in the sun. Absolutely correct. <laughs> now, but the you two point, now but the 2.6 billion. No, okay, it could be more, it could be less, whatever it is. We have the quota for it from yeah. Netherlands uh, checking our figures. Yeah. No, 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 that, that's so, not so disputed. I'm talking about the overall figures. So if it's not 2.6 billion, if it's even 1.6 billion, yeah. or if it's 3.6 billion, it's, still lost. it's minus 20 million because we've done the 20 million. Great. Well, please do keep up the great work. Right, and thanks for having me here. Thanks for doing the interview.